Today I want to show you the traditional way to do the Portuguese knit and purl. And for that, I have just done this little 10 stitch swatch. Now I do still have my slip knot on the needle because I didn't want to lose it while things were getting set up. I am again using the large US 10 or six millimeter double pointed needles for this just because they were handy and it was real easy to get cast on and manage this little tiny swatch. So I do have the knit yarn on my right side and the purl yarn on my left, which is not as important for just plain double knitting as it is for the double knitted brioche. If you put them the opposite in the double knitted brioche, it does have a tendency to twist and tangle. So be very careful about that, which since I have not yet done a flat project, I may actually find an alternative way to do this to help keep my yarns in the right order because when you flip, you then have to move your yarns. And that would mean stopping, changing the hook and everything else. So that might not work well for me. So before I start showing you the actual knit stitches, let's show you how I have my pins and my yarn managed. You'll see that I have the purl yarn on my left shoulder and the knit yarn on my right shoulder. They do need to be high enough that you create a V so that there's enough tension. All right, so for just the, the knit and purl stitch, which this is really handy for a rib project or a um, double knitted project. I'm going to, I slip that slip knot off. I'm leaving it tied because that's what's securing those first stitches right now. Now I'm gonna take my knit yarn, what's attached to the ball, and I'm gonna go over my index, over my index finger, boy, I, I will get that right, under my index finger, over my middle finger, under my ring finger, over my little finger. You can, if you've got enough tension, not go over the little finger, but I need just that little extra bit of tensioning, especially in my right hand. And I find it balances if I do the same on both hands. So I go over both the middle finger and the little finger. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my left hand. Get those all in there and now I have tension. And now that I have tension, what you're gonna see, especially when you're looking at it from your angle, is, get that knot out of the way, is this W. You see, you've got a W because the other tips of the W are on my shoulders. That's going to help prevent keeping your yarns, prevent your yarns from twisting as you're working. Just moving that out of the way. So for a knit stitch, because this is my first stitch, I can just put my needle underneath. I'm going to slip the needle into that first stitch and come to the front of the left needle instead of the back of the left needle. That is the key to a good Portuguese knit stitch is you're coming from a different angle. Now I'm gonna flip that over with my thumb so that it's between the two needles and bring the stitch through. I can now pull the two yarns forward and do my purl stitch as normal. Okay, so the purl stitch isn't any different except that you're flipping it with your thumb. Now I'm going to put my needle back underneath so that they're at the back. Again, through the loop just as normal. You're gonna go knit wise, just like you would for any other form. But instead of leaving the needle at the back, you're gonna bring it to the front of the needle. You're gonna grab your yarn with your thumb and bring it between the two needles and out and under. Now you noticed I kept a little tension on it with my thumb, which made that possible. The first time I kind of used this finger to do it. Now I'm gonna grab both with my thumb bring it forward. 
They do look twisted here, but watch what happens. I'm gonna enter the purl stitch normally, do my normal purl stitch with flipping it with my thumb, and now I'm right back where I started with the W. So while this one is over the top initially, it straightens right back out as soon as you do that purl stitch. Okay, let's do that again. To the back, keep it to the front, pull it through, bring them to the front, enter that stitch normally and grab it with your thumb. And two more stitches. I'm just gonna keep going so that you get a chance to see the process. And yes, I do grab it with my finger from time to time. It's kind of become a habit with my mixed method. When you're doing a rib with a single color and you're going back and forth, it's really interesting because you don't have to grab the yarns with your thumb to bring them forward. They just kind of pop off. It, it's a little harder to see when there's two colors, but try it with just one color. It, it, moves back and forth without any problem. All right, these last few stitches, and I'm gonna be showing you this again when I get to my in the round. I just kinda of wanna show you how I've altered this to a mix of continental and Portuguese. So I'm gonna bring my yarns to the back with my index finger. I'm gonna grab that knit stitch knitwise just like normal and grab the knit yarn, drop the two yarns between the needles, and then I'm right in position to knit the purl stitch Portuguese. Again, to the back, grab the knit yarn, drop them, do the purl stitch. So the big difference between Portuguese and continental or throwing is the knit stitch and what you do with the needles. Your yarns are at the back as they normally would be for any knit stitch, but you put that needle in and bring it to the front so that your thumb can wrap it and it drops off. And then you can bring them forward to do your purl stitch. And that should be enough for you to practice trying Portuguese style knitting. Um, practice it with a single color and see how much you like doing the rib that way because personally, um, it's for me, it's faster. It's much faster than it is trying to, to manipulate that pearl with a continental flip. 